This time of year we sing, Now Thank We All Our God, Give Thanks, Count Your Blessings, and other songs like that that express our gratitude to God. This is good, for thanksgiving is an important part of praise, of prayer, and of worship. And we can never thank God enough. I'd like to read a little list from each of our readings, uh, scripture readings for tonight that suggests what we can be thankful for. And you could add to that list, you can make your own list maybe, and then some scriptures that also illustrate uh, that thankful thing we're thankful for. We may never wander in the desert like the Israelites were doing in Deuteronomy. We may never be a missionary in a foreign land like Paul was to the Philippians. And hopefully we will never suffer leprosy, and yet the issues in all these readings, the issues of life, remain the same. So I hope that these lists and these scriptures will inspire you to pause, exercise your memory, and, and examine your lives occasionally and remind yourselves how much we do have to be thankful for, and then follow up by thanking God. First of all, from Deuteronomy chapter 8, we can be thankful for God's word and for his commands that he gives us, even for the Ten Commandments, which we find impossible to keep. Paul reminds us that the law is holy. The commandment is holy, righteous, and good. We can give thanks for life. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We can give thanks for our children and grandchildren. And the psalmist David reminds us that Children are a heritage, a blessing from the Lord. We can be thankful for land and for possessions. We have so many of those to be thankful for in, in, in our country in the time in which we live. Paul reminded Timothy also, it's not anything to be ashamed of to have things. Paul said, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. It is His, but He gives it to us to use and to enjoy. We can give thanks for God's leading. In John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. My sheep follow me because they know my voice. We can even give thanks for God's testing something that the Israelites weren't very good at, and it's, it goes against human nature, but we can thank God for that too. In Hebrews chapter 12, the writer tells us, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as children. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate and not true children. We can give thanks for clothing and shoes everyday things that we don't think about all the time, but some people don't have them. Jesus reminded us not to worry about these things in the Sermon on the Mount. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We give thanks for bread and food. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. We give thanks for drink. Jesus met a woman at the well who was there to draw water. And he said, if you knew who it is who asks you for water, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And then there's the natural resources that God promised the Israelites they would enjoy. And we too in our land have many of these. And Jesus reminds us in the Sermon on the Mount, He causes His Son, that is God the Father, causes the Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. We have many, many blessings, and particularly physical blessings, and blessings of the place in which we live. From Philippians chapter 4, we have the privilege of prayer. 
One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he finished, one of his disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And the Lord did. He taught the Lord's Prayer, and he taught by example, too, every day, oftentimes. He went out to deserted places, the Bible says, so that he could pray. We can be thankful for the peace of God. Jesus said, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives, but I give you real peace. Things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. We can find all types of these things if we just look around. In fact, many of the things we enjoy, many of our hobbies, sometimes the music we listen to, the books that we read, all kinds of things fit this description. Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, Everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and by prayer. Also in Philippians, Paul reminds them to be thankful for good examples. Whether it's people or, or uh, things we read about, people we read about, Paul also told the Corinthian church and other churches, he said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We can certainly be thankful for God's presence. Jesus, in the end of Matthew's gospel, told the disciples, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We can be thankful whether we're in need or whether we have plenty. When we're in need, we learn trust. As Jesus reminded the people of Israel, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. We can also be thankful when we have contentment. Contentment is that being able to rest in God's presence wherever you are, whatever you have or don't have. Second Peter 1 verse 3 says, God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. He's given us all that we need. And we can be thankful for people who share in our troubles. That's one reason we have funerals. We gather together to support one another. Why we pray for one another when going, undergoing tragedies, surgeries, or health problems, or whatever the case may be. And we can be thankful for people who give. Paul talks about giving in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. And he mentions this, this service of giving that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. And he also mentioned that God supplies both seed to the sower and bread for food. God will multiply gifts and make it so that we can give more and more. So through Philippians chapter 4, we can find many things to be reminded of to be thankful for. And then in our gospel lesson, the healing of the ten lepers, we have freedom, including the freedom to travel around. We have all kinds of freedoms in our country, many more than the people of most countries have. But even more than that, we have freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We can be thankful for the health that we enjoy. And not only that uh, if we don't have it all the time, that we often get healed. Jesus wants to heal us. He wants us to be whole. And it's a sign of the perfection of things to come when we receive health back again. A man with leprosy came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out in his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. We can be thankful for worship. That's what the leper who was healed from the Samaritan was moved to do. Come back and worship and give thanks to the Lord Jesus. That's one of the Ten Commandments to be sure, but our gratitude moves us to come before God daily even in worship and in praise. We can be thankful for salvation. The Bible assures us that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, even as the Samaritan leper was. We can give thanks for a new start. 
Some years ago, there was a saying that was popular, and it was on posters everywhere. Today is the first day of the rest of your lives, and it's true. But even more than that, we receive new hope every time we come to the Lord in prayer. Every time we receive His Word in our hearts, every time we have a new situation that the Lord leads us through, we have new hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. He told Ezekiel the prophet, or the people through Ezekiel, he said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. And finally, we have hope. Hope is something that much of the world doesn't have either. But no matter what the circumstances, Christians always can have hope. In fact, if we lose sight of hope, we are to be most pitied among men because we've kind of lost sight of what life is about. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ who gives us hope. Paul reminded the Romans of this. He said, I consider our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. In this hope, the hope of the resurrection, the hope of our adoption as sons, we were saved. And so Paul reminds us of our heritage of hope through Jesus Christ and through the resurrection. David, in Psalm 103, says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. May we always remind ourselves of his many benefits to us and give thanks in all circumstances to him. In Jesus' name, amen.